Hare Krishna, welcome to the Bhagavatam series. Uh, this is the second uh, session of Bhagavatam series. So we will continue to discuss about the Bhagavatam more systematically, very uh, scrutinizingly. And uh, today the topics is the history of Bhagavatam, the appearance of Narada Muni, and uh, Sila Basadev compiled Bhagavatam, being instructed uh, by his spiritual master Narada Muni. We will be discussing everything today about the history of Bhagavatam, how it appeared. So uh, before we start, we uh, offer our Mangalachana. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Jnana Timirandasya. Jnana Anjana Salakaya. Chakkur Nimaletanjena. Tasme Sri Gurave Namaha, Sri Chaitanya Mano Vistam, Sapitam Janabutale, Soyam Rupa Kadama, Ham Dadati Sopadantikam, Bandeham, Sri Guru, Sri Juta Padakamalam, Sri Gurun Vaisnavanam Cha, Sri Rupam, Sagrajatam, Sagana Siragunatam, Mitam Tam Sajivam, Sadvaitam, Savadutam, Parijana Saitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Sri Radha, Krishna Padam, Sagana Lalitam, Sri Visakam, Mitam Cha, E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshuri Vrishavanu Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Bancha Kalpatri Vasha Kurpa Sindhu Vaivacha Patitanam Pavanabhya Vaishnabhya Bhya Namo Namaha Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Samiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Pasatade Satarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasadi Gauravakta Vrunda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so thank you very much for attending the Bhagavatam series. So we had a, a last week we had a uh, session one where we discuss about the uh, this uh, glories of Bhagavatam. Also, this is question uh, raised by the sages of Naima Saranya, headed by Sonakarushi. So we will have a very quick uh, recap on the very uh, you know session one so that it help us to continue with this succession to and, and uh, discuss about the history of Bhagavatam. So in the glories of Bhagavatam, the, the, the transcendental author Sila Vyasadeva opening notes, very beginning at the very outset of Srimad Bhagavatam, he has glorified with three beautiful verses, the opening verses of Bhagavatam. The very first verses, he defines the, uh, the transcendental author Sila Vyasadeva he defines the definition of the God. In second and third verses, he glorifies Srimad Bhagavatam very profusely before, before even you know, starting to uh, rest of the uh, discussion. So this opening notes are the preface, the three slokas of Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 1, Test 1, 2, 3. These are the preface of entire Bhagavatam. If you understand the three verses, you understand all the rest of the Bhagavatam very easily. So the, the transcendental author, the author of the Bhagavatam opens the notes by saying that Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. He defines the God. The, who is that God? The son of Vasudev Krishna. Janma Deshya Jataha Anmayadita Ratacha Arthisu Abhegyan Swarat. Why he is God? Because everything emanates from him. He is the creator. Janma Deshya Jata means everything creates from him. He is the creator. Janma Adi means he is the creator, he is the maintainer, he is the destroyer. Anvayadita Ratascha Arthesu Abhigya Swarat. He is directly and indirectly cognizant of, the, of his manifestations. Of his creation, maintenance, all the things, material manifestation. Since he is aware of that, the Supreme Lord, either directly or indirectly, just like a chief engineer, he is somehow and other directly, indirectly 
aware of the construction of the building and swarat swarat means is independent so we learn that the definition of god he is the creator maintainer destroyer everything emanates from him as krishna also asserted this fact aham sarvasya prabhav matah sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajate mam buddha bhava samanvita chapter 10 test 8 the chatur shloka of bhagavad gita begins with this one so and second is lord after manifesting or after creating all the material world he is aware of directly or indirectly of his manifestation of his mater- of this material manifestation and third one is swarat very independent he is independent he is not obliged to anything he is supremely independent and fourth one tena brahma hudaye adikabya the vedic knowledge has been first imparted to the first created being brahma so krishna is actually original compiler of vedanta as he claimed in bhagavad gita vedanta brit vedakrit jo aham i am the compiler of veda and vedanta he imparted first to the brahmadi and fourth one muhyanti yas surya so everybody is captivated by delusion his is illusion his maya so powerful is this material manifestation maya janmadascha jatan vaati tarata charthi so abhigya sura tena brahma hudaya adikabya muhyanti yas sura tejavari mirdam jatha vinimaya atrati sarga misra so tejavari mirdam they are deluded even the great personality lord shiva lord brahm deluded his, his maya sometimes you find water in fire similarly although the great personalities like god the demigods are very great personality but still they were bewildered by the illusory potency of the lord the external potency of the lord and the sarga misra is everything is created by his three uh, by, by his material energy material potency dhamna sena sada nirasta kukam but he is aloof from this all this is material manifestation he is own residential abode dhamna sneno sada nirasta kukam and that resident is transcendental beyond this material manifestation and who is that person that person is supreme absolute truth krishna the son of vasudev and i meditate upon him satyam parama dimahi that is very fast note the first statement the given in bhagavatam by the author sila vasudev and the next one he is glorifying the shrimad bhagavatam today we are going to discuss about shrimad bhagavatam the beginning notes only the shrimad bhagavatam has been profusely glorified dharma projita kaitava atra param nirmasaranam sat all the material motivated religion has been rejected and this shrimad bhagavatam appeared it propounds the absolute truth and understood by the devotees who are free from all enviousness first class devotee pure devotee vedyam vastatram param nirmat saranam satam vedyam those who are nirmat saranam satam free from enviousness and bhagavatam is understood by them not any ordinary term they can hear because it is very pure propound the absolute truth propound the truth and it is not materially motivated religion i am going to god to get something so therefore bhagavatam is always stands out is very exalted tapatroy mulanam rojit atra nirma saranam satam vedyam vastavam iti vastu tapatroy mulanam it is distinguished from the true religion to real religion truth to false not only that it approves the material misery if anybody takes shelter or hear bhagavatam it approves the three fold of misery adhyatmik adidaivik adibhut and this bhagavatam mahamuni kirte is compiled by sila basadev the great sage 
in his uh, spiritual maturity under the instruction of narad muni today we are going to discuss this one by reading that kimba parishwara there is no need of taking shelter of any other uh, literature because bhagavatam is enough sufficient to attain the spiritual realization spiritual perfection spiritual emancipation no need sarva vedant sarahi iti ishtade it is stated the beautiful verses from bhagavatam it is said that bhagavatam is sarva vedant sara it is the essence of all scriptures sarva vedant saram hi sri bhagavatam ishtade the beautiful verses it is stated here in, in this beautiful verses it is stated that sarva vedant saram hi sri bhagavatam ishtade तद रसामृत तृप्त सो श्रीमद भागवतम इज डिक्लेर टू बी दि एसेंस ऑफ ऑल वेदांत फिलोसॉफी वन हू इज फेल्ड सेटिस्फिकेशन फ्रॉम इट्स नेक्टेरियन मेलो विल नेवर बी अट्रैक्टेड टू एनी अदर लिटरेचर किंबा परे ईश्वर सद्य हृदय से अवरुद्ध थे देर इज नो नीड ऑफ एनी अदर लिटरेचर बिकॉज इट इज द एसेंस ऑफ ऑल वेदांत Vedanta means ultimate knowledge. It is the essence of Bhagavatam, the natural commentary by same author who compiled Vedanta. Kimba pare rishyoro by taking shelter of Bhagavatam, hearing Bhagavatam, the Lord is immediately, immediately will be appear in our heart. when you hear and glorify the bhagavatam kimba pare rishwara sadya huda se avaruddhate tatra kriti bi susribi tatakshana by simply the process of hearing and glorifying the shrimad bhagavatam or the glories of the lord immediately the lord appear so that is the exalted uh, qualities of shrimad bhagavatam therefore the author is inviting to all devotees whether they are so exalted not exalted please come and taste this nectarian mellow this is the invitation from the author nigama kalpatalu galitam phalam sukhamukhad amrita darba samjitam he great thoughtful person a great philosopher a great devotee please come and release this bhagavatam which is a ripened fruits of vedic desert tree the beda is like a desert tree and that tree there is a ripened fruit which is touched by the parrot like sukadev goswami the great personality and it enhances more taste it is more tastier please come and drink this juice nectarian juice bhagavatam pibatam bhagavatam rasamalayam muhu rasika ubhi aho bhuvi bhav So please come, the thoughtful person. You want to know about the spiritual things? Please come here. Release this Bhagavatam. So therefore, the Bhagavatam is stands out as a very exalted. And not only that, in Padma Purana, it is said that all the limbs of the Lord Krishna represent the different canto. It is stated in this beautiful verses of uh, Bhagavatam that. Uh, the, पदो यदो प्रथम दितो पदो यदो मींस टू लोटस फीट ऑफ द लॉर्ड रिप्रेजेंट द टू कैंटो फर्स्ट एंड सेकंड कैंटो नाउ वी आर इन द फर्स्ट कैंटो वन लेग वी आर टेकिंग शेल्टर ऑफ वन लेग स्लोली स्लोली वी विल गो एंटायर बॉडी ऑफ कृष्णा दैट मींस एंटायर भागवतम वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी तृतीय तुरयो कथयो इरु नाभिस्तत पंचमेव षष्ठ भूजांतरम दरजुगलम तथायु कंठास्तु रागन यदो मुखराविंद दशम पकुल एकादश जश ललतापतम शिरोपी तो द्वादश भवती फर्स्ट एंड सेकेंड कैंटो भागवत श्री कृष्ण स्लोटो स्पीड दि थर्ड एंड फोर्थ कैंटो दर हिज थाइज दि फिफ्थ कैंटो हिज इज नावल दि सिक्स कैंटो हिज इज चेस्ट दि सेवेंथ एंड एट्थ कैंटो दर हिज आर्म्स दि नाइन्थ कैंटो हिज इज थ्रोट दि टेन्थ कैंटो हिज ब्यूटिफुल लोटस फेट लोटस फेस इलेवेंथ कैंटो हिज इज फोर एट दि ट्वेल्थ कैंटो हिज इज हेड आई बाउ डाउन टू दि लॉर्ड the ocean of mercy which color is like a tamala tree so this krishna's all this 
parts are diff- 12 cantos of bhagavata all the different leaf represents the canto therefore shri shrimad bhagavatam is non different from krishna it is said that tamadi devam karuna nidhanam tamala bannam sui avataram apar sansara samudra setu bhaja mahi bhagavatam swarupam bhaja mahi bhagavat swarupam krishna and karan bhagavatam are non different apar sansara samudra setu is like a breeze to cross the ocean of material existence material existence is like a ocean of birth death disease old age and on the top of that there is a breeze that is shrimad bhagavatam and it is non different from krishna so it is very important to learn that how this bhagavatam has come comes forth who has compiled this how he has compiled this what is the reason of compiling bhagavatam today we are going to discuss that therefore chaitanya mahaprabhu taught to sanatan goswami that krishna tulya bhagavata vibhu sarva asraya krishna tulya bhagavata bhagavata is krishna tulya a compared to krishna vibhu means is great sarva asraya a shelter of everyone that is bhagavatam prati shloke prati akhare nana arth kahe every shloko every word speaks so many things that is bhagavatam and by hearing this bhagavatam is the only medicine to get out It's very punyam so today we are going to let us go to directly to the verses today we are going to discuss about the history of bhagavatam how the bhagavatam comes actually in the last session we have discussed all the things like glory of bhagavatam also this is question the naimasarana says ask this question that what is the ultimate good of the uh, human being and uh, the, and the answer was given bhakti is the ultimate good and what is the essence of all scripture that was the second question and the answer was given by sutta goswami was same thing bhakti is the essence of all the scriptures and third question uh, asked by the sages naimasarana suggests to sutta goswami that what is the why krishna appeared then the answer was given krishna appeared to reclaim the conditioned soul anugraha bhaktana to show his mercy to reclaim the conditioned soul and the fourth question asked that how krishna appeared about his purusha lila avatara purusha avatara how he created all the things and krishna has created he expanded himself as a mahavishnu garbhadak kata vishnu kirodak kasa vishnu in this way he created all the material world and he came as a different different avatar after creating this material world he came descended he took the incarnation various incarnations innumerable incarnation he come down to again main purpose to reclaim the condition soul paritranaya sadhuna binasay ch duskritam dharma sanstapana arthaya sambhamame juge juge that was the purpose actually then out of all this 24 incarnation principle although there are so many incarnation it is said that asankhya hi hare ra avatar asankhya avatar asankhya hi hare there are innumerable incarnations but the 24 principal incarnation has been described in bhagavatam and finally sutta goswami declared that etacham cha kala pushna krishna tu bhagavan swayam out of all incarnation you are the source of all incarnation you are the original vishnu that was the fifth question fourth and fifth question then sixth question the as uh, the sages asked that where the after the krishna disappeared after this uh, finishing winding of his dwapar lila a lila the during dwapar yuga where the religion took shelter where is dharma where the dharma goes and it is stated in 1343 bhagavatam that krishna so chodham upagate dharma gyana adibiso so krishna came to establish dharma so he took when he went dharma also left but in kali yuga it appeared again as a bhagavatam 
literally incarnation of the Lord. Krishna took the avatara as Bhagavatam, literally incarnation. Krishna chodhamo pagati dharma jnana adivisa kalo nashta darsam esam punaraka adhuna udita. So Srimad Bhagavatam comes as a brilliant sun in, during, in, in this age of Kali to show the light because we are all in darkness. We do not know what is our ultimate good. Particularly in this age of Kali, we are all very unfortunate. This age is very strife, quarrelsum, disharmony. Therefore, the Bhagavatam has appeared to dissipate. So, Bhagavatam is very, very important. Particularly in this age of Kali, it appeared as a, it is stated in this beautiful verse, it is appeared as a brilliant sun, particularly in this Kali. This is the statement of Bhagavatam. The particular in this age of Kali, this Bhagavatam is so important. Krishna so dhamo pagate dharma jnana adi visaha kalo nashta drissame sam purana arka dhuna udita. This Bhagavata Purana is as brilliant as the sun and it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode, accompanied by religion, knowledge, etc. Person who have lost their vision due to dense darkness of ignorance in the age of Kali, particularly in this age of Kali, try to understand this, shall get light from this Purana. If you are not aware of Bhagavatam, if you do not study Bhagavatam, if you do not understand Bhagavatam, then very difficult to get out from this age of Kali. Because Dharma is there. Dharma is take shelter in Bhagavatam. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada used to say that, that our knowledge is up to Bhagavatam. If you know Bhagavatam, you know everything. You don't need to know anything. Our Gaudiya Parampara, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never commented on Bhagavatam. Never commented on Vedanta Sutra. Because he admitted that Bhagavatam is the natural commentary of Vedanta Sutra. The essence of all Vedanta, all Vedas. So there is no need of, you know, separate commentary on Veda and Vedanta. So this is very important for us. So today we are going to, um, we are going to learn about the history of Bhagavatam, how it happens. So we start our uh, classes session 2 with this beautiful verses, chapter 4 to chapter 7, is describe the history of Bhagavatam. So when this, uh, all the 10,000 sages, 80, sorry, 80,000 sages, they are assembled in a place at the end of Dvapara Yuga called Naimasar, Naimasar. And I am privileged to, to go to that places. I have seen that places. I went a pilgrimage to that places. So under the banyan tree, till now the banyan tree is there, you know, that place location. It is near the North India. So that um, Naimasarana forest, it was uh, the 80,000 sages headed by Sonakurushi assembled and they were doing the fire sacrifice because they understood that the Kali Yuga, the upcoming Kali Yuga is very deplorable, very uh, devastating. So they want to counteract the very uh, contaminating influence of this Kali Yuga, they were very concerned. So they were doing 10 fire sacrifice. At that time, the great Sutta Goswami, he came to this Naimasarana and during his arrival, the Sonakurushi, all the sages headed by Sonakurushi, they are asked, questioning so many things to know that what is the ultimate good for the people so that, you know, they can get out from this onslaught of uh, Kali Yuga, the influence, the bad influence of Kali Yuga. So, so, so now the, uh, the Sonuka, the head of all these sages, is asking very nice, is glorifying the Sutta Goswami. After questioning the six very important question, after raising six question and got the reply from Sutta Goswami, befitting reply from Sutta Goswami, they were very happy, they were glorifying Sutta Goswami. Because this is question is very, very important. Because it introduces 
this bhakta bhagavana what is the ultimate good of uh, you know every living entity so there is very very important question because it's related to this krishna lord krishna and it is also for the welfare of the living beings so they were very happy they were very pleased by hearing this is uh, answers of all the answers of their question from sutta goswami so sonuko bat the 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 chief of this uh, uh, sages sonaka he glorifying by saying suta suta mahabhag badana badantam bara <coughs> bara kathang bhagavatim punyam yad aha bhagavana chukkha very beautiful verses so no ko said oh sutta goswami you are the most fortunate respected of all those who can speak and recite the sutta goswami they are telling beautifully they are telling how mahabhaga what is that um, sutta sutta mahabhaga you are very fortunate why very fortunate because you are respected of all those who can speak and recite sutta goswami when when the Srimad Bhagavatam was first spoken by the Sukadev Goswami. That time there were so many exalted sages, Narada Muni, Vyasadev, even the, the first compiler, the original compiler of Bhagavatam also was present to listen. And that time Sutta Goswami also was present. So he is very fortunate that he has heard the original speaker Sukadev, from Sukadev Goswami. So they are very glorifying him. Please relate the pious message of Srimad Bhagavatam. which was spoken by the great powerful says sukadev goswami so originally it was spoken by sukadev goswami so they are asking the um, in what period at what place was this first begin why was this taken up this was the question asked by this onaka the chief of all the sages a head of all the sages and from where did krishna doipana basa the great sage get the inspiration to compile the literature so this is the question today we are going to discuss answer to this question we are going to discuss history of bhagavatam in what period and what place was this first begun the shrimad bhagavatam why was this taken up why it was spoken from where did krishna doipana basa the transcendental author the great sage get the inspiration to compile the literature the three question has been asked by sages the answer to this three question is today's subject matter so it was spoken originally by the sukadev goswami how it was spoken who is sukadev goswami sukadev goswami is the son of vyasadev vyasadev is the empowered incarnation of the supreme lord mahamuni the great sage also empowered incarnation of the lord bhagavan is the empowered incarnation satya vyaksha avatar so the so vyasadev the great uh, sage and he and his son was a great devotee sukadev goswami he is very transcendental sukadev goswami is such exalted personality he is very transcendental very renounced while sila basadev was following his son when when uh, sukadev goswami was in the womb of the mother for many years he does not want to come because he knows that this is all maya and finally he was assured by the lord krishna himself the maya will never touch you that time he was ready to come out from the womb of the mother and as soon as he came out from the womb of the mother he ran away from the household life he was a very transcendentalist and sukadev goes the his father basadev out of his uh, parental parental love he wanted to stop him so sila basadev was following his son please stop please stop come back and during that time the beautiful young girls they were taking bath naked 
and that time when his son sukadev goswami passed and they never covered and at that time vasudev also was passing as soon as they saw vasudev immediately covered so so vasudev asked why why it is discrepancy why there is a difference you know and they replied that they replied very nicely the sage inquired about this the young ladies replied that his son was purified when looking at them made no distinction between male and female he was so purified sukadev goswami he never distinguished male and female he was not bodily conception he was beyond this bodily conception but says made such distinction but the says vasudev is asking he is making a distinction you are ladies and these are gents why you did not cover like this so there is a distinction so therefore they covered so that was the position that establishes the position of sukadev goswami how he is so exalted so in this way so in this way um, sukadev goswami left the house and the great sage who was fully equipped with knowledge could see with the transcendental vision of deterioration of everything so here it is say that that in this beautiful verses the great sage vasudev saw anomaly in du- duties of millennium this happens on the earth in different ways due to the unseen force of time so vasudev went to bath in saraswati actually vasudev by his ashram was western side of the saraswati river so after taking bath once he was meditating then he could find out he can he could see that envision that the kali yuga is coming and there was a lot of anomalies in kali yuga is a is age of dissension discrepancy disharmony quarrel hypocrisy short life short memory so many bad thing disturb misdirection so span of life is very reduced so he was very contemplating that and he was uh, he, he can envision that the bad things is coming up just like a astrologer can foretell about the future a astronomer also can foretell forecast the upcoming uh, you know movement of the planets similarly vasudev is a great devotee the exalted devotee he could see trikalangya they know the future past and present he was meditating he could see that there is a great danger is coming so he was very concerned that how to help the humanity from this great danger therefore he compiled that it is said that what is the reason of compiling because he saw that very bad thing is happening the great sage who was fully equipped with knowledge could see with this transcendental vision that deterioration of everything material due to influence of the sage due to influence of the kali yuga which is very abhorrent abominable despicable deplorable age everything is going to deteriorate he could also see the faithless people in general would be reduced in duration of life would be impatient due to lack of goodness so he complained contemplated for the welfare of men in all status and order of life in all status and order of life he is contemplating how to do a welfare work that is the region of bringing of this bhagavatam then he saw that sacrifice mentioned in the vedas were means means by which people ko occupation could be purified and simplify the process he divided into vedas into four and expand among the men so he saw that this vedas which has been fast imparted uh, to uh, imparted to uh, lord brahma brahma ji imparted the knowledge in the heart by the lord tena brahma hote adhikabhya mhanti so adhikabhya means lord brahma so lord brahma knows the vedas because it was imparted by this lord himself in the heart so that knowledge brahma is speaking brahma spoke this knowledge vedas but it was one it was not four one vedas only atharva vedas vedam means knowledge so atharva veda so this this vedic knowledge is important to purify our activities because on account of our activities 
वी आर सफरिंग वी आर टेकिंग बाग कारणम गुणसंग जन्म जन्मेशु अकॉर्डिंग टू अवर कर्मा वी आर गेटिंग डिफरेंट स्पेसिस ऑफ लाइफ सो हाउ टू प्यूरिफाई दिस कर्मा देर फॉर द बेद हेज बीन स्पोकन बाय द ब्रह्मा बट इट वॉज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड इट इज वन बेद एवरीथिंग वॉज देयर सो टू मेक इट मोर सिंप्लीफाइड सो दैट एवरीबडी कैन असेस इट सो ही डिवाइडेड द फोर बेद सॉरी वन बेद अथर्व टू श्याम रीग यजूर एंड अथर्व फोर बेद not only that he given the authority or <coughs> representation is representative to take care of the all the four vedas so what he did after dividing the four vedas four division of original source knowledge veda were met separately but the historical fact and authentic story mentioned in purana are called fifth veda and after doing all this four division of the veda in order to facilitate everyone to understand it and expand among the main he started with fifth by the puranas he created puranas means stories stories related to veda in to facilitate to understand the veda very clearly that is called fifth vedas the corollary supplementary of veda they are also known as fifth veda and after the vedas were divided into four division paliyarushi become professor of rig veda jaimini become professor of sam veda vishampayana alone become glorified by ajur veda so he as his disciple has taken care of all the vedas they were representing all the vedas have been assigned to them that the great sages basadev who is very kind and ignorant uh, to the ignorant masses edited the veda they might be assimilated by less intellectual people see the vedas are divided into four for that what reason so that it will be assimilated by less intelligent people because it's very difficult to understand vedas and also vedanta the aphorism of vedas the code word the adage the, the proverb of vedas so it's very difficult for less intelligent people therefore he has edited the veda that might be assimilated so also he created purana to help further then he also created um, the mahabharat this is very beautiful verse mahabharat stri sudra dijavadu naam traina sutra gochara so to help this three out of compassion the great says thought it is wise that this should enable men to achieve ultimate goal of life thus he compiled the great historical narration called mahabharat for women laborers and the friend of the twice born to help because everybody cannot access the vedas so he divided it into four to help the less intelligent people to assimilate A- again he created puranas the fifth veda a supplementary of purana the story historical fact to help the help to understand vedas source of knowledge and finally he compiled the mahabharat so that the less intelligent people like women laborers and the job on the friend of twice born so they can also understand it so it is his out of compassion so he did everything but he was not satisfied after doing so many things all the vedas vedanta all the vedic literature he was not uh, satisfied it is stated beautifully that or twice born bamana still his mind was not satisfied although he engaged himself in working for the total welfare for all people so his mind is not satisfied even though he compiled for the sake of for the welfare of the mass of the people less intelligent people the the laborer class the twice born the women so he compiled so many literature veda divided into four vedas the puranas and so so and so forth but still he was not uh, happy his mind is not totally happy so does the uh, does the sage being dissatisfied at heart at once begin to reflect because he knew the essence of religion he said with it. so he understood that why i am not happy because i have not glorified the lord sufficiently beautifully it is stated here that 
I have understood disciplinary vows, unpretentiously worship the Veda and spiritual master in the altar of sacrifice. I have also abided by the ruling, ruling sem, uh, rulings and uh, have shown the import of disciplic succession through the explanation of Mahabharata by which even women, Sudra and other can see the path of religion. Still, I am not happy. What is the reason of his unhappiness? He himself thought that, that I have not done something wrong. I have done something wrong. So I am feeling incomplete, though I myself fully equipped with everything required by the Veda. So everything he has required by the Veda for an author to, to write, compile, he, he has all qualification. He has done everything under the guidance of spiritual master. Everything is perfect, perfectly qualified. But still his mind is not, uh, you know, satisfied. Why? Because this may be, his contemplating, his conjecturing, his speculating that it, this may be because I did not specially point out devotional service of the Lord, which is the dear both to perfect being and to the infallible Lord. See, how bhakti is very, very important. He himself thinking, I may not, I may be, you know, I did not specially, sufficiently and specially point out devotional service. Veda is dealing with uh, four purusartha. That is um, dharma, Kama, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Mokya. But there is no devotional service in Vedas. So you are thinking that I did everything but still I am not satisfied because I have not mentioned about the essence of everything. Panchama Purushartha, that is called Bhakti. That is the essence. Because that Bhakti is dearer to both perfect being also to the Lord. Lord pleases Tata bhakti mamor jita. Krishna say bhakti pleases me. Krishna akarsani. Bhakti Krishna akarsani. It attracts the Lord. And he himself is thinking that I have not done it. So at that time, when he was contemplating in very despondent mood, that time the great Narada Muni came to the place. Narada Muni is the spiritual master of Sri Sila Vyasadeva. So he analyzed the defect of disciple and he analyzed that you have done perfect everything. What is the reason of your dispendency? Then he revealed this fact. Spiritual master is always guide the disciple when he was in very uh, doubt or dispendency. Just like Arjuna was in a very distressed, very uh, precarious condition. Deluded at that time when you when he surrendered to Krishna, so Krishna is dissipating his ignorance, dissipating his doubt. Similarly, Sila Basadeva in a very uh, doubtful that because he could not specially point out, could not specially mention the devotional service to the Lord, therefore he is feeling incomplete. After Even after compiling so many transcendental literature, Veda, Vedanta, Puranas, Mahabharata for the welfare of others. So in one the next control this appearance of Narada Muni. Narada Muni understanding that he appeared. He say that that thus the sage among the god Narada comfortably seated, apparently smiling, addressed to Rishi among the Brahmanas. So at that time when he appeared, when he uh, Narada Muni appeared and uh, he wanted to dissipate and he told to uh, Basadev, what is the reason of your despondency? Narada Muni said this beautiful verses that addressing Basadev, Narada inquired, O son of Parasra, are you satisfied by identifying body or mind as object of self? So he was addressing Basadev, which is the Parasra, the father of Basadev is Parasra and Satyabhuti. So he is finding out why, what is the reason of your despondency? So Narada Muni has pointed out in this beautiful verses. You have hardly broadcast the sublime and spotless glories of personality of God. That philosophy which does not satisfy the transcendental sense of the Lord is considered worthless. That is the reason, even after compiling so many transcendental literature for the welfare of the common people, Sila Basadeva was very disappointed, in despondent state. Narada Muni, this spiritual master, is clearing 
his uh, his his despondency his doubt his his um, such coming that you have done one thing wrong what is that you have not sufficiently broadcasted the sublime spotless glory the personality of god head that is the essence that is the essence why bhagavatam is stands out from all other literature because it has in all the inferno of glories of the uh, transcendental glories of the supreme personality of god head and that is the right medicine this is the punyam bhagavatam is punyam because that is the right medicine to cure our disease our disease is that we are now struck in this material existence how to cross this unfathomable ocean where every step padam padam yad vipadam natayati padam padam yad vipadam every step is a danger very difficult to cross the ocean where there is a shark there is a big big you know dangerous elements in the sea very difficult and we will be drowned without undoubtedly therefore the bhagavatam is compiled it's like a breeze it's like a boat so that we do not need to swim across just board on the boat and cross this ocean this is the right medicine it is it is stated in this beautiful verses that nirbhitati se rupagi yamanan bhavo sado mano virama ka uttam shloki gunanu badat punam virajjate vina pasugana glorification of supreme lord supreme personality of god it is performed in the parampara system it is conveyed from spiritual master to disciple such glorification is released by those no longer interested in the false temporary glorification of this cosmic manifestation description of the lord are the right medicine see very important description of the lord is the right medicine for condition soul undergoing repeated birth and death therefore who will see hearing such glorification of the lord except a butcher or one who is killing his own self so it is stated here that that uh, this is the right medicine for the condition soul undergoing repeated birth and death in this material ocean of existence ocean of material existence therefore who will see the fearing bhagavatam is the only medicine is the right medicine means we are diseased medicine only administer to a diseased people so we are all materially infected and by hearing bhagavatam sinvatam so katha krishna punya shravana kitana it will purify us disinfect us udha antastani abhadrani all the infection all the inauspiciousness all the dirty thing will be eliminated by process of hearing this bhagavatam therefore narada muni telling you have not broadcasted the glories of supreme personality of godhead so what is the use of literature where we do not sinatam sokotha krishna krishna katha if there is no krishna katha what is the use of this literature useless therefore you are feeling incomplete you are feeling despondent narada muni is pointing out his mistake there is a beautiful verses in this regard uh, 5 1914 no it's uh, what is this verses this beautiful verses it is say that um, this beautiful verses nayatra vaikuntha katha suda paga na sadava bhagavatastha dasra nayatra jagya sa maha maha uchchava suresh loko pi navais sabhyatam in this beautiful 51924 of bhagavatam intelligent person does not take interest in a place even the even in the topmost planetary system if the pure ganges of topics of concerning supreme lord activity does not flow there if there are no there uh, there are not devotees engaged in the service on the bank of such a river of piety 
if there are no festivals of sankirtana jagya to satisfy the lord especially in sankirtana jagya is recommended in the sense beautiful verses na tatra vaikuntha sudapada the devotee are not interested intelligent people not interested where there is no krishna katha because krishna katha is very pious punyam sinvatam sokatha krishna punya sarvana kirtana nashta prayasu abadreshu nityam bhagavat sevaya भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नास्ति बाय हियरिंग वी विल प्यूरिफाई एंड द भक्ति व्हिच इज वेरी प्लीजिंग टू द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड एंड एन अ डिवोटी दैट विल स्प्राउट अप जसंग भाई श्रीय मनाम कृष्णा परम पुरुषे भक्तिर उत्पादयते पुंसम शोक मोह भय बा द देयरफॉर the narad muni is pointing out that uh, pointing out his um, mistake that you have not sufficiently broadcasted the glories therefore this is the problem therefore you are despondent सागोदहान मैत्र गृहेशु गृह मे दिन सारी सो नारद मुनि इज नाउ डिस्क्लोजिंग द रीजन फॉर युअर डिस्पोडेन्स ऑफ शिला व्यासदेव भवादित प्राय जस भागवत मलम जन साऊ ना तुष्यते मन तदर्शन खिल You have hard, hardly broadcasted the spotless glories of personality of God. That philosophy does not does not satisfy the transcendental senses of the Lord. Is considered worthless. So all your compilation is worthless because it does not sufficiently glorify. Then the next verses is very nice. Narada Muni says that. very important verses jatha dharma dayas chartha muni varyanu kirtitaha na tatha vasudevas mahima vasudeva mahima means glory ja vasudeva hi anubarti na anubannitah anubannitah means bannita means display describe anubannitah because the vasudeva na tatha vasudeva mahima anubannitah Although the great sage, you have very broadly described the four principles beginning with the religious performances. You have not described such an extent the glories of supreme personality of God at Vasudev. That is the reason you are despondent. You have compiled Veda, Vedanta, Purana, Itihasa, Mahabharat, and you have also described the four principles of spiritual life, Kama. धर्म अर्थ काम मुख्य बट यू हैव नॉट सफिशियंटली डिस्क्राइब द ग्लोरीज ऑफ द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड एड दैट इज कृष्ण कथा हरि कथा ऑनलेस हरि कथा इज देयर वन कैन नॉट प्यूरिफाई इन गेट आउट फ्रॉम द मेटेरियल एक्जिस्टेंस देयर फॉर यू आर नॉट हैप्पी एंड नॉट ओनली दैट ही अगेन वेरी नाइसली एक्सप्लेन दिस ब्यूटीफुल वर्सेस नयादचित्रपदेम हरेर्जस जगत प्रवित्र प्रगणीत कर्चि तदबायस तीर्थम मुसंति मनस नयत्र हंस निर्मती उसी कखया द ब्यूटिफुल वर्स दोज वर्ड्स विच डू नॉट डिस्क्राइब द ग्लोरीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड हु एलोन कैन सेंटिफाई द एटमोस्फियर ऑफ द वोल यूनिवर्स आर कंसिडर्ड बाय द सेंटली पर्सन टू बी लाइक एंड टू ए प्लेस ऑफ पिलिग्रिमेज फॉर क्राउ क्रोज since the all perfect person are inhabitants of transcendental abode they do not derive any pleasure there narada muni further describe hey basudev try to understand any word that do not describe the glories of the lord it's like a pilgrimage places of crows people are nowadays it's simply talking and hearing all nonsense full of literature is there is no krishna katha there is no word krishna or use of the word lord 
therefore it is a pilgrimage of crows people are interested in magazine newspaper these are the pilgrimage of the crows just like crows they are interested in filthy place they do not go to the very nice place they go to all the filthy place all this thras dam similarly all these modern people who are interested in modern literature the materialistic people interested in modern literature is like a tirtham is a pilgrimage places for crows but devotee they do not devotee like swan swan will not be interested in filthy place they will be always seen or found in a very beautiful lake very very pure lake very clean lake therefore those who are devotees they are not interested in all this garbage crows are after the garbage all this literature which do not describe the glories these are all garbage actually should be thrown should not be tossed should not be go there devotee never interested that so what is, what is the use of all this you know literature which is bereft of the glories of the lord wonderful transcendental activities on the other hand any literature tad bhaga tad bhag visarga janathag vipalpa jasmin prati shlokam avadavati api namami anantasya jasa nakhina ankinati asrivan chinmanti gayanti grinan sadava beautiful verses prabhupad always use this to this verses in the preface of bhagavad bhagavad gita he has written this verse although Prabhupada, so, out of his humility, he has uh, said this beautiful. He stated this beautiful verses. Although I am incompetent to write or compile Bhagavad Gita, but because that Bhag Visarga Janatha Viplava Dasmin Pratisago is stated in Bhagavatam, on the other hand, the literature which is full of description of transcendental glories of the name, fame, form, pastime, the unlimited supreme Lord. is a different creation full of transcendental words directed toward bringing about the revolution in impious lives of such world misdirect civilization such transcendental literature even though imperfectly composed are hard song accepted by purified men who are thoroughly honest although it is a imperfect composition but it describes the glories of the supreme lord that makes it so exalted that even the great personality they appreciate it admire it accept it heard it sung it everything propas right this sir although it may be i am not so competent or it may be um, not properly composed but because it has contain it has the description of the uh, wonderful past time of the supreme personality of god it therefore that max that qualifies this literature to be admired accepted sung and heard by the great personality thoroughly honest people they like it therefore any literature which is not describe the glories that is useless that is the reason that why after compiling so many veda vedanta all this shrimad bhagavat we never i know he is very uh, incomplete because he never sufficiently broadcasted or glorified the supreme personality of god over emphasizing emphasizing on this four purusartha fruitive activities purifying the fruitive activities kama sorry dharma artha kama mukhya so that is the reason naiskramyam api achutya bhav varditam na sobate gyanam alam niranjanam कुत पुनः श्वास सस्वद्रम ईश्वरे न चापित कर्म यदि अकारणम दिस ब्यूटिफुल वर्सेस नॉलेज ऑफ सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन इवन द फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल मेटेरियल एफिनिटी डज नॉट लुक वेल इफ डिवॉइड ऑफ कंसेप्शन ऑफ इनफैलिबल गॉड व्हाट व्हेन व्हाट देन इज द यूज ऑफ फ्रूटिव एक्टिविटी व्हिच आर नेचुरली प्लेन पेनफुल फ्रॉम द वेरी बिगिनिंग एंड ट्रांजेंट बाय नेचर इफ दे आर नॉट यूटिलाइज्ड फॉर द डिवोशनल सर्विस beautiful narada muni say that knowledge of self realization all this literature is about self realization knowledge knowledge about who i am what is my relationship with lord 
what is my relationship with this material world what is the goal of life all this knowledge about the self realization who am i all the things that does not look good if it is devoid of conception of god so the what is the use of all this fruitive activities that is very painful transient by nature if you even uh, purify the fruitive activities by the process of following the vedas what is the use of that that is transient you can go up to uh, demiga swarga heavenly planet but you have to again come back after you exhaust your past activities that is transient by nature and very painful also because you have to succeed to in fruitive activity you have to undergo so much uh, hardship therefore it is rejected by intelligent class of people therefore he is narada muni is pointing out and inducing him that you write a literature which is full of description of the lord which is the full of uh, description of the transcendental activities vasudeva mahima anubannitah you write that late so is inducing that is the reason of how the bhagavatam is brought about the question was asked that how the who compiled and how it is uh, brought out this is the reason that uh, the bhagavatam is brought out oh basudev your vision is completely perfect your good fame is spotless you are firm in vow and situated in truthfulness thus you can think of past time of the lord in a trance for the liberation of the people in general from all material bondage now here is inspiring him narada muni inspiring his disciple sila basudev you now can think of the past time of the lord in your trance and compile a literature for the liberation of the general people from this material bondage that is the goal of life how to get out from this material bondage unless one hears the transcendental past time of the lord there is no question of getting out from this material bondage it is stated very nicely particularly in this age of kali in this uh, krishna also spoke to uddhava 11624 beautiful verse my dear lord those pious and saintly person who in the age of kali hear about your transcendental activity also glorify them will easily cross over the darkness of the age unless one hear about the transcendental activity that is the right medicine bhavo sudu we are in a bhava sagara bhava sagara means bhava means to become we become repeatedly taking birth and death punara api jananam punara api maranam purana api janama jastire is going on repeatedly birth and death we are moving we are uh, fleeing from one species to another species one mother womb to another mother womb according to our karma we are in a material bondage due to karma so to get out from this imprisonment this imprisonment of material existence we have to only solution to hear this is called bhava roga means repeated birth and death and medicine is hearing about krishna uttama shloka gunanubadat so here it is said that you have to hear about krishna particularly in this age of kali so that you can cross this ocean you can disinfect you can cure yan yani te charitani sa manushya sadhav kalo sinvata kritayatta cha tarishanti anjasatamah we can swim across this ajnasatamah this darkness of kali by simply sinvan sinvantah hearing process and kritayanta cha glorifying hearing and glorifying the activities of the lord charitani sa the character activities of the lord that is only method sinbanta kar sinbanta ha hearing the gateway to liberation here is the gateway to liberation the ex- the express way to godhead express way to go back is hearing process and glorifying tatra kirti bi susribi tatakshana immediately krishna appear in the heart disinfect and 
clear the path to go back to him. Therefore, Chukadev Goswami is uh, saying here, everything is complete, but you can now think of, you know, compiling a literature that, that has all the glorification of the past time of the Lord, so that it will liberate the mass of the people from the material bondage. Whatever you desire to describe that is separate in vision of the Lord simply reacts with different forms and names to agitate the mind as the wind agitates the boat which has no resting place. Other than this the literature, everything is very agitating, useless. This is a beautiful verse. Sister. People in general are naturally inclined to enjoy. You have encouraged them in that way in the name of religion. That is verily condemned and is quite unreasonable because they are guided under your instruction. They will accept such activity in the name of religion, will hardly care for prohibition. So this is the problem. See how he pointed out Narada Muni. So you have encouraged them in the name of religion, you know, dharma, you do the dharma, in the name of religion, you, you get some artha money. After doing some religious sacrifices, you get some money, you are blessed by the Lord and get some money, that money you are enjoying sense gratification. Nobody will be interested in the mokhya liberation even. Therefore, he is pointing out, you are encouraging them in the name of religion, religion. because they, because they, they, in Kali Yuga, people are naturally inclined to enjoy. It is stated here, you know, people are naturally inclined. People are naturally inclined to all this... Uh, Things. So in this beautiful verse, it says that that in this material world, the conditioned soul is always inclined to sex, meat eating, intoxication. Therefore, religious scripture never actually encourages such activity. Although scriptural injunction provide for sex through sacred marriage, for meat eating, through sacrificial offering, for intoxication, through the acceptance of ritual cup of wine, such ceremonies are meant for ultimate purpose of renunciation. Isn't it? Normally, they are inclined, and this kind of literature will encourage. Therefore, Narada Muni dissuade Bhagavad Vasudev, don't do, you write some literature which is Supreme Lord is unlimited, only a very expert personality retired from activity of material happiness, deserve to understand this knowledge of spiritual value. Therefore, those who are not well situated due to material attachment should be known, should be shown the ways of transcendental realization by your goodness through description of the transcendental activity of Supreme very important because it is not very uh, very difficult for ordinary people to get this knowledge of spiritual values. Only person who was completely exhausted, expert personality and retired from all the material activities or activities of material happiness, they can understand. But normal people cannot understand. To show them mercy, you should compile a literature that is full of description of the Lord so that the, uh, the common people can be purified. So this is the two beautiful verses. Tatya so dharma charanara vujam hare bhajan apakvata pateta tayadi yatra kubhav kubhav bhadram abhuts amushakim kubhartha apta avajatam so dharma taha. The beautiful verses. Prabhupada used this word. One who has forsaken his material occupation to engage in devotional service of the Lord may sometimes fall down while in an immature stage. Yet there is no danger of being unsuccessful on the other hand. A devotee fully engaged in occupational duty does not gain anything. So he is saying that even a person engaged in devotional service, premature study failed, but still he is gaining. Because in the next birth, whatever he has left, he will continue that. The spiritual values never deteriorate. On the other hand, a person is materially successful. But what is the use of that? In next verse, he will start with beginning. So therefore, it is said that there is no failure in devotional service. Always win-win situation. Just like Jatau. Jatau in Ramayana, Lord Ram, Rama, Ram Navami is approaching. 
story of Nama Ramana that when Ravana was kidnapped, Sita, on the way that there was a devotee of the Lord called Jatau, the bad, you know. So he trying to <clears throat> he was trying to prevent the Ravana to carry his kidnap Sita. There was a big fight, and Jatau was very old, but he tried a lot, tried very hard. But he could not succeed, and he was killed. But Ram came and saw that, and Jatau told that I am unsuccessful. Ram said, "You are not unsuccessful. You are always successful. You have attempted to do that. That is itself is a success. There is no unsuccess failure. Even salpam apyasya dharma, a little bit of devotional service will help us to further advance." So Jatau himself, the ceremony. Was <clears throat> fire ceremony, death ceremony was performed by the Lord Himself. How exalted He got liberated. So there is no question of failure. The seva he to prayte to ko bitana labhyate yad brahmatam upari yada tal labhyate dukkha bad anyatta sukam kalle na sarvatta gavira ramanta. So here it is said that person who actually intelligent philosophical Inclined should never endeavor only for the purposeful end, which is not obtained even. So they should not uh, endeavor for that because they know according to my karma I will become Bill Gates or gate keeper, Ambani or rickshaw puller. So I should focus to how to get out from this material bondage. That was the intelligent person. Therefore, the bhakti is very exalted. So he is inducing that you create a literature which full of bhakti. My dear Basa, even though devotee of the Lord Krishna sometimes fall down somehow and other, he certainly does not undergo material existence like other, because a person who has once released the taste of lotus feet of the Lord can do nothing but remember the ecstasy again and again. So the bhakti is so powerful. Even though somehow fall down, he will not lose the taste. That is bhakti. Therefore, you compile a literature which is full of description of bhakti, the transcendental pastime of the Lord by hearing them. One will, the bhakti will sprout up in the heart, and that bhakti is so exalted. Even though somebody could not complete that bhakti, still he is the winner. He will never lose the taste. That was the statement. So in this way, Narada Muni was inducing, and and he himself said that how by the process of bhakti he also got this Narada Muni. He told that in previous bar. I was a maid servant. I was the son of a maid servant. <clears throat> he, he himself telling his story, own story of his previous birth, how he became Narada. Very beautiful uh, verse one five twenty five. Once only by their permission, I took the remnant of their food. By so doing, all my sins were at once eradicated. Thus, being engaged, I become purified in heart. At the time, very nature the transcendentalist become attracted to me. So he was telling once upon a time once. During Chaturmas or any season, in autumn, four months, the the devotees, the pure devotee of the Lord, they are engaged in preaching. They could not, due to rain, they could not go out. Therefore, they take shelter of a places, and all four months they are engrossed in glorifying the Lord's transcendental pastime and discussing about that. And it happened that this Narada Muni, who was in previous bar, is a maid servant, is the son of a maid servant, <clears throat> and it happened that. They all these uh, great sages. <clears throat> they were all came to that place. And 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 uh, um, and they stayed in that place. See, oh Muni, in my past life, last millennium, I was born as a son of certain uh, maid servant, engaged in the service of Brahmana, who were following the principle of Vedanta. They were living together during the four month of rainy season. I was engaged in the, in the personal service. So Narada Muni was explaining his own past time, the how by engaging in bhakti he got uh, you know he was very <clears throat> he became Narada, great great personality. Although they were impartial by nature, those who follow the follower of Vedanta bless me with their causeless mercy. As far as I was concerned, I was self controlled, had no attachment for sports. Even though I was a boy in addition, I was not naughty. I did not speak more than required. So what happened? We did. He took some remnant of the prasadam. That is very important. You take the remnant of the prasadam, remnant of the food, from the great sages, 
it purifies our heart. Therefore, the uh, prasadam is very first principle, the basic, the fundamental principle of uh, Krishna consciousness or bhakti yoga. By taking prasadam, one can cleanse all the sinful reactions. That is, uh, Krishna himself said that, Jagyansito Sinasanta Muchanti Sarva Kilvesai. All the sinful reaction will be cleansed by taking prasadam, honoring prasadam. So he took the prasadam, which is left by the great sages, and he purified it, 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 it purifies his heart. And, and the very nature of transcendentalist become attracted to me. See, you are just infected by this. That is called prasadam. Why prasadam? Because prasadam is prasadam is being taken by the is it the remnant of the food of Lord and or his devotees. So when you take it, it was infectious. All the nature of the great devotees or lords, it infected us, instill in our heart, purify all bad things, and all the nature become, you know, instill in our heart, we become like them. We get purified. Therefore, it is said in Chaitanya Charitamrita that uh, the three very powerful things. What is that three powerful thing? What is that? Pada Dhuli. Bhakta Pada Dhuli. Bhakta Pada. Bhakta Pada Dhuli. Bhakta Pada. So this is the beautiful verses from Antya. This is the Bhakta Pada Duli, Ara Bhakta Pada Jol, Bhakta Bhukta Parisha, Bhakta Bhutta Vasesa, Ehi Tine Bol, Ehi Tino Mahabol, Bhakta Pada Duli, the dust of the Bhakta, pure devotee, Bhakta Pada Jol, the water that fit, that clean the uh, feet of the, you know, uh, devotees, Bhakta Bhukta Vasesa, the remnant of the food. The dust of the feet of a devotee, the water that has washed the feet of a devotee, the remnants of food left by a devotee are very powerful substances. By rendering service to these three, one attains supreme goal of ecstatic love for Krishna. In all the revealed scriptures, that is loudly declared again and again. Every scripture loudly declared three very important. The dust of the lotus feet of the pure devotee, the water that was washed, the feet of the devotee and the remnant of the food left by the devotee. The three things are very, very powerful. If you, Ehi tina sarva hoite krishna prema hoye punna punaha sarva shastra pura kiya kai. All the shastra loudly declared by serving these three things, by accepting these three things, krishna prema hoye, we develop the law. That is the same thing happened to Narada Muni, that he developed the law by taking the remnant of the food. At that time, the very nature of transcendental became attracted to me. See? Oh, Vasudev, in that association by the mercy of those great Vedantists, I could hear from the scribe the activities of the Lord Krishna. Thus, I listened attentively. My taste for hearing personality of God had increased at every step. Very, very important point. Very important point. Because hearing is very, very important. It's the express way to God it. Sinvatam Shokasta Punya. Punya means it will purify. But to get this urge of hearing, to inclination of hearing, how to get that? That is very important. To serve this pure devotee. That is stated in Canto 1, you know. Sususya Sadadhanasya Vasudeva Katharuchi. It's a beautiful verse in first Canto. Sushusha Sadadhana Sya Vasudeva Katharuchishan Mahatasheva Yavipra Punya Tithani Vashana Or twice born sages by serving those devotees who are completely freed from all vices. Great service is done. By such service one gets affinity for hearing the message of Vasudeva. 
very very important how to get the earth of hearing by seva by serving to the great devotee so narada muni served them they took this remnant of the food three very important service bhakta pada jol bhakta pada dhuli bhakta bhukta avashesa tine mahabal by this process he the he gained this bhakti for krishna bhakti sprouts up krishna prema hoy krishna prema pai so this is very important by the process of rendering service you get the ors and by that process he was hearing and every step and he was uh, and my taste for hearing increased at every step that is very important without hearing sufficiently about krishna katha nobody can get out for that hearing we need to serve the lord serve the pure devotees because pure devotee only the the bhakti can be sprouted up by only by pure devotee chaitanya mahaprabhu has spoken in 22 chapter 22 prahlad maharaj raudana so many reference for this that how the bhakti is uh, sprouted it is stated that mahato krupa bina kono karme bhakti nao krishna bhakti dure thau krishna bhakti dure thau sansara naya ke unless one is favored by pure devotee one cannot attain platform of devotional service to say nothing of krishna bhakti one cannot even be relieved from the bondage of material existence so this is the root cause of our bhakti is pure devotee association with pure devotee that is very important entire chapter 2051 to 2200 50 verses chaitanya mahaprabhu is explaining sanatana goswami about the how exalted devotee how bhakti can be sprouted up everything about this how the association is very very important association with pure devotee that that is the root cause of our bhakti krishna bhakti so in this way narada muni was explaining that how he got uh, this bhakti ogret oh, says as soon as i got a taste for the personality of god and my attention to hear lord was unflinching and my taste developed i could realize that it was only in my ignorance i had accepted the gross and subtle covering for both lord and i are transcendental then slowly slowly all this doubt will be dissipated we are clear that what i am what is my relationship with lord mama vyansa jeevo loke jeevo bhutta sanatana lord is transcendental i am transcendental i am part of the part and parcel of the lord somehow have torn away from the lord therefore i am embodied and caged in this material body to again get out from this imprisonment and engage in the service of the lord that is my constitutional position this is my constitutional duty divara swarupaye nitya krishnara dasa that is understanding when you engage in bhakti automatically gyana vairagya will come vasudeve bhagavati bhakti yoga prayajita janayati asubairagam gyana chahitukam the gyana vairagya they are two children of bhakti they will automatically come engage in bhakti automatically come so we can know the relationship between us who am i what who is god what is my relationship what is my goal of life all this can be immediately understood as soon as one engages in devotional service janati asu vairagyam asu means very quickly not it will not take so long to understand gyana vairagya will automatically come very quickly come one one who is engaged in the vasudeva vasudeva bhagavati prayaj so this is the thing how uh, how he has developed that in this way narada muni is explaining is that how important the bhakti and the during two season the rainy season and atom i had the opportunity to hear this great soul sages constantly chant the on adulterate glories of lord hari as the flow of my devotional self begin the covering of mode of passion and ignorance vanish the mode of ignorance which is the obstruction bhogo aishara prasakta nam this is bhogo ishara krishna say because of bhogo ishara you are not engaging my devotional service the mode of passion and ignorance there obstruction stumbling block to our advancement in bhakti bhogo ishara prasakta nam tai aprahat chetasam consciousness has been deviated distracted vyavasvaitmika buddhi 
resolute determination. Samadhau na vidyate is not sprouting up. The bhakti is not sprouting up. Bhakti is not progressing. Because we are in mode of... Bhakti is not sprouting up because it, we are so much into mode of passion and ignorance. By process of engaging service, a process of hearing from a pure devotee, all this mode of ignorance and passion, which is a stumbling block, which is a stumbling block to path of liberation, will be vanquished. All this kama, kama, yesa, krodha, usha, rajaguna, samud, baba, all this rajaguna, mode of passion and ignorance, kama, krodha, that will all eradicate it, vanished by the process of. So in this way, Narada Muni now purified, and but what happened? When the sages left, then he was continuing practicing whatever he learned from the sages, contemplating on that yeah, But his mother was died. He went to milk the cows. She went to milk the cows. She was bitten by the snake and she died. And that is also one opportunity, although one may say that how she died, she was engaging. But that is all providence. This Krishna's things, he knows how to that will intensify this this kind of distress to the devotee is not that Lord is uh, not merciful. Rather, Lord is more merciful. He want to intensify. He want to intensify the uh, uh, bhakti so that he put in a distress condition. Just like Arjuna, Pandava, they were undergoing so many distress. Their kingdom was usurped. Their, their wife was insulted. They were attempted to kill. Despite all this uh, reversal, they always remember Krishna. That is their devotees. And Lord, sometimes knowingly they do this because to intensify the or enhance, augment the love for Him. So in this way, Narada Muni, after his mother uh, died, see, he was alone. He went so many forests. He left these places, forest. And then he was uh, sitting down after he went to one forest and sitting under the banyan tree. He was contemplating what the, uh, the process taught by the sages. And when one contemplating, Lord appeared before him. After appearing him, Lord blessed and, and he blessed him that you will be next but you will become, you know, uh, the great year. So by appearance, Narada Muni purified and but immediately Lord disappeared. That... And Narada Muni, the hankering for the Narada Muni was very manifold. He was hankering that beautiful form of the Lord. So by that process of hankering, at the one moment, at one time, there the death comes and as a lightning and he was liberated. He got a new body as Narada Muni. So he was explaining this his own birth that how Bhakti is powerful. So in this way, Narada Muni explained his own birth story to establish the fact that bhakti is very important, that bhakti is, and you should compile a literature which is full of bhakti. Bhakti means the transcendental pastime of the Lord. The interaction between bhakta and bhagavana, the transaction between bhakta and bhagavana called bhakti. And we one should explain, you should explain that. By that process, the common people who do not understand, who are not so pure, particularly in this age of Kali, they will get out from this material bondage. So, Narada Muni, after hearing all the things, Sukadev Goswami, uh, sorry, Vasudev, he went to took bath in a, uh, he went to took bath uh, Saraswati River and meditate. In that place, Sila Vasudev in his own ashram, which was surrounded by buried trees, sat down to meditate after touching the water of purification. Then what he did? Then Bhakti Jogena Manasa, because he fixed his mind perfectly engaging it by linking the devotional set Bhakti Joga. Without any tinge of materialism, he saw the absolute personality of Godhead along with his external energy, which was under full control. So, with a pure consciousness under the instruction of Narada Muni, then he went to Saraswati River, took bath and came into Ashrama and he was very one-pointed. One-pointed way, only Bhakti, no materialism. He was meditating on absolute truth and he saw the Lord along with the Maya. Then, this is a beautiful verse. Jasya samoham jiva jasya samohitam jiva atmanam trigunatmakam. So, here he saw that 
due to this external energy living entity although transcendental to the modes of material nature thing ends up as a material product that then uh, undergoes the reaction of material nature there then he what he saw that these people they have torn away from the lord although they belong to lord they are transcendental but they are torn away from the lord as soon as uh, krishna bhuliya jiva bhagavan chakare nikatastha mayatare japatiya dare so as soon as they they want to enjoy separately from the lord they are captured by the maya under the influence of maya under the spell of maya they are thinking that they are the body they are the material product in this way they are undergoing so much reaction of this material nature they are thinking i am this body i belong to this material world i am the body in this way they are working on that platform they are getting reaction as a result of their karmic reaction they are changing their body one after one and they are suffering birth death disease old age repeated birth death old age in different species of life so he re- understood or realized that one then anartha upasamam sakya bhakti yoga adakya jalokasya gyata vidwan chakre satastha samhita then the material misery of the living entity which are superfluous to him can be directly mitigated by the linking process of devotional service but the mass of people do not know this therefore the learned vasudev compile this vedic literature which is in relation to the supreme truth that is the answer to this onakuru she is asking how it how this nimad bhagavatam comes and why it is come why because anarthopasamam sakhyat bhakti yoga adakyad all this material misery is very superfluous to mitigate this material misery because due to ignorance only we are we are caught in this uh, caught by the uh, caught and captivated by the material energy of the lord maya actually it is not the fact we do not belong to this material world we are not this body nor we belong to this material existence but due to our ignorance therefore anartha upasama takya bhakti yoga adakya they do not know how to mitigate this misery how to get out from this precarious situation existence by the process of linking devotional service process of bhakti they do not know mass people they do not know that the bhakti is the solution to all the things therefore learned basudev compiled the vedic literature which is in relation to the supreme truth that is very important in relation to the supreme lokasya gyanta vidwan chakre satasya samhita is a relation to the supreme personality of satasya means in relation to the supreme truth this vedic literature is compiled in relation to so that the people who are suffering can link up with devotional service that is the reason why vasudev the transcendental author compact this vedic literature this is the final final shloka we will read before wind up yasyam bhai sriyamanayam krishna parama purushe bhakti rutpada de punsan shoka maya bhayo paya simply by once giving simply by once giving oral reception to this vedic literature the feeling for loving devotional service to the lord krishna the supreme personality of godhead sprouts up at once to extinguish the fire of lamentation illusion and fearfulness beautifully stated direct satsang bhai sriyamanayam by hearing process by oral reception tavishta kannarandrena swanam bhuvasur sarur bhava swanam samalam krishna what is that nunanti samalam krishna sarirath jatha sabe pravishta kannarandrena by oral reception by hearing this vedic literature what will happen loving bhakti the bhakti will sprout up bhakti for krishna will sprout up and as lo- as soon as the bhakti sprouts up it will extinguish all the fire of lamentation illusion fearfulness our lamentation fearfulness illusion because of our misunderstanding is giving of the mind because of our infection material infection so as soon as this bhakti sprouts up by the process of hearing it cleanses samalam dhunati samalam krishna 
It will clean just all the infection. Disinfect. Krishna himself take this sweep. Sorry, uh, um, uh, Krishna himself take and sweep. Punya sravana kirtana hude antustani abadrani vidunati svasatam. Cleans, completely cleans. And all this kind of an inauspicious thing like lamentation, illusion, fearfulness. Therefore, Srimad Bhagavatam is a very, very important book of literature. Every devotee, every Vaishnava, every in general people, everybody should hear. Everybody must hear. Sarva Asraya Paramananda Pathaya Sanatana Goswami says, Paramananda Pathaya Pratishloke Prema Varsa. Here, Narada Muni says, Bhakti is very important. You have not compiled a literature which related to bhakti or related bhakti or relation to the supreme lord therefore it is all useless sanatan goswami is telling paramananda pathaya pati akhare prema varsha every word of bhagavatam is raining the prema bhakti 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 nothing else sada sarvada asraya everybody should take shelter up Krishna to Bhagavatam to Swayam Krishna. Hey Bhagavatam, you are like a Krishna. You are, you are Krishna himself. And it's Paramananda, very pleased, supremely blissful, supremely happy to you know, hear this Bhagavatam. Because every word is full of rain of prema, bhakti. Thank you very much. Everybody is requested. Please don't neglect Bhagavatam. If you do not read Bhagavatam, Nasta Prayas, Abhadra, so all Abhadrami will never extinguish. Try to hear Bhagavatam. A hearing Bhagavatam is medicine. So, this is the today we have discussed about the, the how Bhagavatam and who compiled Bhagavatam, how Bhagavatam has been compiled, for what reason. So, we understood that Vasudev has compiled the Bhagavatam for the welfare of the common mass of the people. Because it has a bhakti, it is linking with bhakti, which is the medicine to get out from the material body. So, to next session, we will learn about the, the how Bhagavatam was spoken by the Sukadev Goswami, why he spoke to Parikit Maharaj, who is Parikit Maharaj, what is his birth and activities. Next session. Thank you very much. Gantara Srimad Bhavatam ki jai, all goes to Slapropa. Hare Krishna.